Let's get started. Welcome to the Financial Purpose Podcast. All opinions expressed by me or guests of the podcast are solely our own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Life Moves Wealth Management. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for any investment decisions. Clients of Life Moves Wealth Management may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. Hey there, welcome back. This is episode 58. And uh, today I'm going to talk about specifically exit planning. And so this episode is going to be really helpful for anybody who uh, owns a business, is thinking of starting a business, uh, or runs a nonprofit, anything that involves a business type of entity. And by the way, if you run a nonprofit, that is absolutely a business entity that earns money and pays expenses. Just like any other business, you just have a couple of differences on the tax side and on the funding side and uh, and on your mandates and things like that. But anyway, any of those business entities, uh, entrepreneurs out there that have multiple entities, this episode will be helpful to you. So the reason why this is on my mind is I just got back uh, kind of later last night from Little Rock, Arkansas. And if you've ever been to Little Rock, Arkansas, you've been, you've been. That, and I think that's probably the most I could say is you've been um, nice little town, met some really nice people, actually had a really uh, had a fun time uh, meeting people at the hotel and uh, and even on the, the shuttle. My Uber driver was fantastic. It was like talking to my grandmother from the south. So I loved it. But anyway, um, I was in Little Rock for the Business Transition Summit, which is a one day conference um, that is built around understanding the whole business transitions and exit planning process because every single business at some point will have a transition and it's just a matter of how effective and how well that transition goes um, really depends on how you run your business. And so that's the part that I really want to get into um, is is what exit planning is because it isn't just about crossing that finish line. That's not the exit planning that you need to do as a business owner. Exit planning is really about how strong you run the race through that finish line. And so if you think about, for example, running a marathon, if you've ever ran a marathon, I never have. I've only ran a series of 5Ks because I just don't believe there's any reason to run further than that unless something is chasing you. And even then I've got some questions about why you should run further than than that. But anyway, that's just me. I would much rather be on my bike and I can ride forever on that thing. But anyway, if you think about a marathon, um, the goal is to get to the finish line under a certain number of time. I think it's what, like six hours that you have to uh, to complete the thing. And, and obviously you want to try to get under four hours to feel like you're a good runner. And then if you can get around two or two and a half hours, then you're a super elite runner. But how you prepare for that race determines how well you cross the finish line. Are you going to run across? Are you going to sprint across? Are you going to crawl across? Are you going to need somebody to help carry you across? Um, that all depends on how well you've you've prepared and, and how well you've run that race. So real quick note about the Business Transition Summit. Um, I went to Little Rock to attend that because I've been in talks with the organizers of that event for a few months and we are bringing that to Scottsdale and uh, so I'm going to be the local chair of that conference here in Scottsdale we're aiming for next spring uh, the March time frame so there's going to be a lot more details to come on that but if you're a business owner entrepreneur nonprofit uh, owner or operator uh, definitely plan mark your calendars for the March time frame this will be an event that you will not want to miss. It is half how to run your business well, understanding where you are on the business journey. And it is the other half how you prepare for your eventual exit so that you can be one of the people who make it successfully. And statistically, only about 17% of businesses have a successful exit. And so if you flip that ratio, 83% of businesses in business operating today will not be able to have a successful exit and find a buyer that can take the business and and run it well. So we want you to be in what's called the 17% Club. And the more of you that get in the 17% Club, we're going to have to change the name. And that is the goal of that particular event, how to run your business so well that it will be uh, 
possible for you to successfully exit and uh, go on to the next stage of your life, whatever that looks like for you. So that's coming. More to come on that. In the meantime, um, this episode has a companion blog post at lifemoveswealth.com slash blog. Um, and it's called Exit Planning. It's about running the race, not just crossing the finish line. And so my notes here are that blog post. I'm going to read uh, a bit. I'm going to riff a bit, and uh, and we'll get through it. So here's the thing about exit planning. Many business owners, uh, if they've heard of exit planning, a lot of business owners haven't. But as soon as you say the word exit planning, um, it makes you think of the finish line. And where that becomes challenging is you'll have either a mix of owners who will say, oh, I'm, that's not for me. I'm, I'm not planning to sell my business or leave my business or, you know, a few episodes back at John Kiankio on and we talked about instead of using the word exit or sell, we want to use the word monetize because your business is an asset and we monetize assets. And so, uh, but they'll say, yeah, that's not for me. I'm not doing that for a long time. Um, or you'll have owners who say, yeah, that is for me. I, I want to sell my business in the next couple of months. And either way, we have a bit of a challenge because exit planning, as I said, is about how you run the race, not just about crossing that finish line. By treating your business like an investment today, now, you'll be better positioned to cross the finish line on your terms and at your pace. And running your business at a high level creates options, whether you plan to sell, pass down the business to uh, one of your employees or sell to your management team, or you have a uh, a child or a family member that's going to take it over, um, or you're going to step into a new role and keep the business but focus on something else. However you do that, turning your business into a valuable asset rather than just a job, that is the goal. Because most owners are owners because they left a job, created themselves maybe a higher paying job, but it is a job. They work in the business more than they work on the business, and we want to flip that over. So I'm going to talk about a few things to help you understand how we want to run the race. So the very first thing is, as an owner, you want to know your numbers and you want to know what drives business value. And that's a critical part of running your business at a high level, right? The ability to have a deep understanding of your financials and knowing what drives value in your business. There are owners that I've worked with who they might look at their financials once a quarter maybe once a year, maybe only at tax time. And then sometimes they're surprised by what they see on the numbers or they're not sure how the numbers got to where they were. You want to be able to know those numbers inside and out and not only know the numbers, but know what activities in the business are driving the numbers either to the good side or to the bad side. And you want to make sure if you have activity that is incentivizing the good side that you are maximizing that. If you have activity that is incentivizing the bad side, that you figure out a way to fix that, correct it, and start driving it more intentionally. Um, and so to do that, you've got to regularly review profit margins, cash flow, revenue growth, other key metrics um, that a potential investor or a buyer of your business uh, might scrutinize. And it's not just about knowing how much money you're making. It's about knowing how efficiently your business operates and where the real value lies. Identifying the factors that enhance your business's value is essential for increasing its attractiveness to future buyers. And again, if you're somebody who says, well, I'm not planning on selling my business for another 30 years, what do I care about what a buyer thinks now? Now is where you start to build the value that compounds for yourself over time. Because what happens in business is there's no straight line. It's never up and to the right. Um, it, it, it always looks like a roller coaster. It's up and down and up and down and up and down and around and around and upside down and all the things. Um, that's really what the business journey is. And there's sometimes along the business journey where you think you're at a higher stage and then something happens in the business where you need to take a couple of steps back and regroup. And that can be things like you lose a key employee or you lose a key uh, customer. And so it takes a chunk of revenue away. Um, or you have to do an expansion of the business, um, or, uh, you know, you just have something that happens where it moves you further back or further ahead of the business journey. And that will always be somewhat of a fluid continuum. So, 
Um, whether things like customer loyalty, proprietary technology, or a strong management team, focus on the things that drive value in the business, and it's going to ensure that your business truly becomes an investment that is appealing to others uh, because you never know when there's going to be a great opportunity for you to um, to bring either bring on an investor, go seek more money, or somebody can come along and say, I really love your business. I like what you do. I think I can build on your platform. I'd like to buy all of your technology, all of your processes, and you get a massive multiple that you were not expecting. Those things only become possible when you run your business well. So that approach positions you not only to thrive, but it creates opportunities that you're going to need to fund whatever that next stage is, whether that's reinvesting into new ventures or supporting your retirement income. The next thing that we want to look at is turning your business into a source of wealth. And when you run your business like an investment rather than just a job, uh, you're setting yourself up for long-term financial success. By optimizing your business's financial health and focusing on what drives value, you can create a steady path to funding whatever it is that you have as a future goal. The strategy ensures that when you do decide to exit, whatever that exit looks like or monetization of your asset, if we want to look at it that way, um, whether that's starting a new chapter, pursuing a passion a project, securing uh, a comfortable retirement, whatever it is, treating your business as an investment allows you to shift from being an operator to becoming a wise and savvy investor and that helps you make decisions that increase not only the profitability of your business, but it also increases the overall market value. So think about that, that statement. Making a shift from being an operator of your business, and we always want good operators because good operators run highly successful, profitable, great reputation type businesses in their communities. They provide good jobs. They are good community uh, partners and participants, and uh, and they're engaged on a civic level. That's a good operator, but that good operator, we really want you to be able to step into the next level and become a savvy investor. That's where working on your business comes into play, right? So you own this business asset, you're treating it well, but you're running it like, like it's an investment, and that investment's job is to return value to yourself, to your employees, to the community, and that kind of thing. So in the long run, um, taking that approach, going from operator to investor, it will change the way you look at your business. It'll change the way you make decisions. It'll change how you evaluate whether or not you should make investments for marketing or for new product lines or to expand the team or to buy a piece of real estate or whatever it is. It's going to shift the way that you look at things like even just an ROI on any of those decisions. And I heard, I heard the term ROI more times than I can count on Tuesday at the Business Transition Summit because it's, not, it's one of those terms that is in the business lexicon and everybody talks about it. But I think from my experience, and even from myself included as running a business, sometimes... ROI is not fully developed, it's not fully understood, and it's not fully written out before the decision is made. We might look at it and go, yeah, that looks like a good idea. I think maybe I can make some money. Hopefully some prospecting will occur. Maybe, just maybe at some point, clients will come out of it, whatever it is. Um, when you can say, this is a decision I'm going to make, this is the investment we're going to make. This is not, not this is how much it's going to cost. This is how much of an investment I'm going to make, and this is what I expect to get in return for returning those dollars. And it's important to note, um, Tom Bronson, who is the owner of the Business Transition Summit and the uh, the lead organizer, he will tell you, uh, and he did say uh, in the conference, that not every ROI can be measured in terms of dollars and cents. Sometimes it's measured in people, Sometimes it's measured in growth in certain areas. Sometimes it's measured in reputation management. Whatever that is, know what your ROI is because that is how you start to look at your business as an investment rather than 
the job or the the thing that you have to to operate and hope that you can make payroll at some point. So in the long run, it gives you the most flexibility to transition when the time is right. It's going to maximize your financial outcomes, probably going to maximize financial outcomes for your people as well, which is very important. Okay, the next thing that we want to look at is as a investor of an asset that is a business or an owner, if we want to be more comfortable there, you want to build your team of professionals. Um, now, I heard of, <laughs> I was in uh, a breakout session and the breakout session was uh, focused on understanding the value drivers that lead to successful business exit outcomes, something along those lines. I don't think the title was that long, but that was the point of it. And someone asked a question about who, from a professional standpoint, does an owner need to have on their team? Who do they need to be working with on a regular basis? So obviously a CPA is important. Obviously a business attorney is important. Obviously, a financial professional, financial advisor, wealth manager, financial planner, whatever you want to call that person, is important. The moderator of that event um, is a partner in a firm that consults on exit planning, um, business valuations, that kind of thing. And this is a quote. And I'm gonna, it's, a, it's a paraphrase quote, but this is what he said. He said, here's the thing with wealth managers that you need to know. When it comes to wealth managers, it's kind of like how all thumbs are fingers, but not all fingers are thumbs. And as soon as I heard it, it clicked. I got it. I thought it was fantastic. I loved that quote. And I'll say it one more time. When you think about wealth managers, it's kind of like thinking that all thumbs are fingers, but not all fingers are thumbs. And what he meant by that is... Every once in a while, for all of the people who call themselves wealth managers, financial advisors, financial planners, whatever the title is, every once in a while, you'll come across one who understands business, what drives business value, how to assess business value, how to tie it into the owner's financial plan appropriately, and how to help the owner run that business like any other asset so that when it's included on the owner's personal balance sheet or net worth statement, that it's actually a credible asset that can be monetized for future income just like any other asset that's on there. And the problem is, is that a lot of people who sit in my seat on my side of the table uh, and have the title that I have, um, they often don't really think about or want to know a lot about or even explore a lot about the business until the owner's ready to sell. And then they can help the owner find somebody who can help them sell it so that the wealth manager gets the money to, to manage in an investment account. The problem with that is the investment manager, the asset manager, I'm using those terms on purpose, the wealth manager, that person has waited way too long to be helpful to that business owner because, again, the exit planning is not about the sale. It's about what happens several years before the sale so that the business is ran well enough that it can actually be monetized. So not all wealth managers have the knowledge, the understanding, the interest in helping business owners pre-sale and helping them run their business. So his his advice was to find a financial professional that understands how this works. And if you're listening, I am pointing to myself um, shamelessly because you have to be able to to be able you have to be able to pull a P and L, sit down with the business owner, and ask them questions about what shows up on that P and L, and then to be able to bring that over to the balance sheet. And the cash flow statement and understand how those three statements talk to each other so that you can give the client some advice on things like, uh, like I've done this. Hey, let's let's start a spreadsheet. I'm going to take your detailed profit and loss statement, not just the summary. I'm going to take the detailed, which means I'm going to go through every single transaction that shows up on the P&L 
or that drives a number on the P&L. And we're going to figure out which one of these for sure is a business expense and which one of these for sure is a personal expense. And if we're not sure about either of those two, it's probably going to be a personal expense. And we want to do that because we don't want you living out of your business because anybody, a banker, an investor, a potential buyer who looks at those financials, and if it looks unclear, if it looks a little messy, if it looks like you're living out of the business, if it looks like they're going to have to do a bunch of work to do ad backs, they're going to give you a massive discount, and they're just going to say, this looks like a mess. I think I can run it better, but I'm not going to pay you what it's worth because you haven't ran it well, and you have decreased the value, and suddenly you're saying, no, 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 no. Those, those, are, those are my expenses. Just add them back. They're not going to want to do all that work. So maybe they'll give you the ad back for things like your rent payment or your salary as the owner or something like that, maybe your health insurance premiums, whatever it is. Um, but that's it. They're not going to go through and say, okay, let me give you, I'll add back this 7-Eleven and that Starbucks and this Apple store and right this Amazon and those kinds of things. They're not going to do that. But you need a financial professional who can sit down and say, hey, let's get this fixed. Let me look at your pricing structure. Tell me how you're paying these employees. Why would we do that as a financial advisor or a wealth manager? Well, because most business owners, especially small business owners, the financial health of the business directly impacts the financial health of the individual or the personal financial planning. And so we want to be sure that those two things are tied together because they are, they flow through. And we want the owner to have a healthy business assets so that they have healthy personal assets and they're working on one strategy to maximize on both sides of that. So anyway, to his point, find the thumbs like me who have the skill set to help you as an owner run your business well. Now, again, I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm not a, a business consultant. I'm not going to come in and fix your operations. I'm not going to tell you how to do your taxes. I'm not going to do any of that. But I am going to tell you things inside of the business or ways that you're running the business that may be harming you financially for the future, for the future. And um, that's kind of the job, right? So if that number for the business assets going to show up on the business owner's personal net worth statement, that we should have a really, really damn good understanding of what that business really is worth, why it's worth that, and what we can do to continue to maximize that asset. So that moderator, um, as I said, he said that quote, and uh, and I'm just going to say, kind of, you'll see this in the blog post if you go check it out again, lifemoveswealth.com slash blog. Um, basically, any person with the title that sounds like financial advisor, wealth manager, financial planner, whatever, who quote unquote works with business owners, but doesn't help them understand their business KPIs, their pricing model, their financials, their business value. If they're not working on that stuff, they're really not providing true wealth management. And my guess is they only really want to get the assets so that way they can get a bigger paycheck because they're managing more money. That's just my guess. I'm sorry. That's the reality. If you're one of these people, you're a financial professional hearing this and you're working with business owners, start doing those things if you're not already because that's how you truly earn the value of the fee that you're charging. It's not on the investments. It's not how good your strategy is. Anybody can make an investment strategy anymore. Anybody can pull up chat GPT, chat GPT. That sounded really blurry. Chat GPT. Anybody can pull it up and type in a command to, you know, to give you an investment portfolio that has this mix, that has this protection, that has, you know, this Sortino ratio or this volatility index or, you know, whatever your criteria is, you can throw it in there. Give me the highest sharp ratio with the least volatility, whatever. It's going to give you an investment portfolio. I've actually done it just for fun. So anybody can do that now. There's, there's literally very, very little value in the investment portfolio. There just is. There's some value in the investment process, um, in the selection process and how that works and your buy sell discipline. But there's no, there's really no no value in just running investments. There just isn't, in my opinion. So in the end, 
when we're thinking about exit planning, it isn't just about leaving the business. Um, it really is about running the business so well that when the time comes, however that time comes, you're ready to transition smoothly, maximize the value of the asset, of the business that you've built, that you've ran, um, and that you'd like to, I would think, see continue uh, and continue for your employees' sake, continue for your community's sake, and so on. So I can help, we can help um, regularly assessing business owner and the business financial health um, and pulling the statements and doing all the things that I talked about in this episode. It is part of the Life Moves Wealth financial planning process for business owners. And so you can always learn more about that. If you go to lifemoveswealth.com, there is a page for business owners. You'll see a couple of the challenges that most business owners face. These are the things that we work on regularly as a part of personal financial planning because if you're a business owner, there is absolutely no way to do personal financial planning without pulling in the business. So if you're talking to another financial advisor, make sure that they're considering the business and truly helping you work on that as a financial asset because it's very important. And if they're not, please go find somebody who is. Again, go to lifemoveswealth.com, shameless, selfish, sheep, no, not sheepish, absolute plug for Life Moves Wealth and for the work that I do um, because we do it well and we can certainly help. So uh, I hope that this episode has been helpful to you for thinking about exit planning. Um, I'll tell you in the coming episodes over the next few months, we'll probably be talking a lot about exit planning, maximizing business value and those kinds of things um, because we will be the uh, the host of the Business Transition Summit here in Scottsdale. I'm working on putting together the advisory board at this point. These are going to be the people who are going to um, not only be sponsors of the event, but they're going to help create content that's going to be valuable for you to get as a business owner. So again, March is the time frame for that Business Transition Summit. It's going to be awesome. It was awesome in Little Rock. I can't wait to get it here in Scottsdale. It's going to be a lot of fun. So you'll be hearing more about that. Um, at some point, I will have Tom Bronson uh, on the podcast maybe a couple of times, and we're going to talk about um, truly maximizing that business value uh, for yourself and for your employees and, again, for the community. So uh, rather than beating a dead horse, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, please like, subscribe, share the episode if you are listening and you know a business owner who you think just feels like they – um, are running ragged and, you know, they just have created a job for themselves and they can't get above it, send them my way. I'd be happy to talk with them. I'd be happy to help them uh, assess where they are in their business journey, what's going on, what we might need to do to help. And then more importantly, how I can help them start to work on, on the business rather than just in it. And uh, questions, hit uh, info at lifemoveswealth.com. Be happy to talk with you there. And until next time, go be financially awesome. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. To learn more about your financial purpose, visit lifemoveswealth.com.